The prop bag I wore to the Belgrade workshop was black, Armani, and the size of a hardcover novel, with a single shoulder strap so that it could be slung artfully across my torso. With so many magic tricks, gimmicks, and other tools of the trade necessary to use in the field, it was impossible to fit everything into just four pants pockets. So nearly every pua in the game had a prop bag. The contents of mine were as follows, one pack of gum, Wrigley's Big Red no matter how good your game is, you're not going to get a kiss close if your breath reeks. One pack of condoms, Trojan, lubricated necessary not only in case you have sex but also for the psychological boost of knowing you're prepared to. One pencil, one pen for writing down phone numbers, taking notes, performing magic tricks, and analyzing handwriting. One piece of dryer lint for the lint opener, walk up to a woman, stop, wordlessly remove lint, hidden in the palm of your hand, from her clothing, ask, how long has that been there, then hand her the piece of lint. One envelope of pre-selected photos for mysteries photo routine. One digital camera for mysteries digital photo routine, first take a photo of yourself and a girl smiling, then another one striking a serious pose, and, 80 finally, one kissing, on the cheek or lips. Afterward, look through the photos with her. At the final photo, say, we make a good copy, don't we? If she agrees, you're in. One box of Tic Tacs for the Tic Tac routine, put two Tic Tacs in your hand. Eat one very slowly. Then feed the second one to her. If she accepts it, say, there's something I forgot to tell you. I'm an Indian giver. I want my Tic Tac back. Then kiss her. Lip balm, cover up, eyeliner, blotting paper optional male makeup. Cheat sheet, three pages one page of favorite routines for quick reference. Two pages of new routines and lines to practice. One set of wooden runes in cloth bag for rune readings. One notebook for phone numbers, notes, magic tricks, and Ross Jeffries' crappy sketch artist opener, in which you very seriously draw a portrait of a girl, tell her your beauty has inspired me to high art, and then show her a stick figure with a title like, Semi-Pretty Girl in Coffee Shop, 2005. One Cryptolite Necklace Glow in the Dark Necklace, for peacocking. Two sets of fake ear and lip piercings optional body adornment. One small digital recorder for surreptitiously recording Sarge's to play back and critique afterward. 81 Two spare cheap necklaces, two spare thumb rings to give to girls as gifts after a number close. Ask, you're not a thief are you? Then slowly remove your necklace or thumb ring, put it on her, kiss her, and say, this is still mine. It's something to remember me by. I want it back next time I see you. After she leaves, replace your jewelry with a spare from the bag. One small black light for pointing out lint and dandruff on girls' clothing a negative four sample bottles of different colognes for smelling good. And for the cologne opener, spritz a different cologne on each wrist. Then have a girl smell your wrists and choose a favorite. Afterward, mark her choice on the appropriate wrist with a pen. Tally the results at the end of the night to find the best scent for yourself. Various magic tricks for bending forks, making cigarettes vanish, and levitating beer bottles. Yes, I was bringing out the big guns. It was an important night my first workshop as a wing and I needed to prove myself I had neglected to tell Mystery that his standard workshop fee was half the annual salary of the average Serbian, so most of our students were from out of the country. They met us at Ben Akiba, a lounge just off the central square in Belgrade. Exotic option was an American who had taken a train from Florence, Italy, where he was going to school, Jerry was a ski instructor from Munich, Germany, and Sasha was a local who had been studying in Austria. Strangers size each other up in seconds, a hundred tiny details, from dress to body language, combined to create a first impression. Mystery's task and now mine was to fine-tune the details and make puas out of these three. Exotic option was cool, in fact, he was trying so hard to be cool that it was going to work against him. 
Jerry had a great sense of humor but came off on first impression as boring. And Sasha well, he was badly in need of AD to repair. Just socializing was going to be a challenge for him, he looked like a big baby goose with acne. This time, it was my turn to go around the table and ask, what's your score, and what are your sticking points, and how many girls would you like to sleep with? Exotic Option, who was 20, had been with two women. I have the balls to approach, and I did pull some Hans in the past, he began, draping his left arm casually over a neighboring seat. But my sticking point is the attract phase. Even when I get vibes that I attract them, I still don't close. Jerry, who was 33, had been with three women. I can work coffee shops and most other low noise environments, but I'm uncomfortable in clubs. And Sasha, who was 22, said he had been with one woman, though we suspected he was exaggerating by one. I'm into the game because it's like Dungeons and Dragons. When I learn a NEG or a routine, it's like getting a new spell or a staff that I can't wait to use. One by one, they placed their fears, and their voice recorders, on the table. My job was to get them into the game. I needed to get what was in my head into theirs. The teaching portion of the workshop was easy. All I had to do was keep mystery on track he loved the sound of his own voice and give them material. The challenge was going to be the demonstration part. As we spoke, we sent the boys on missions to various tables. We had them open sets for watched their body language and the responses of the women, then gave them feedback, you were leaning into the set, which showed neediness. Stand up straight and rock on your back foot as if you might walk away at any moment. You were making them uncomfortable by hovering over them for so long. You should have sat down and given yourself a time constraint. Say, one can only stay for a couple minutes because I have to rejoin my friends soon. This way they won't worry that you're going to sit there all night. A set is a group of people in a public place. A two set is a group of two people, a three set is three people, and so on. 83 Sasha did the worst. He fumbled through his openers, stared at his shoes, and lacked even a modicum of confidence. Girls listened to him only out of politeness. At the bar, I noticed a delicate black-haired girl and a tall blonde with a perfect fake tan, deep dimples, and hair in bow Derek braids. They radiated air ergy and confidence. This was not going to be an easy set. So I gave it to Sasha. Go into the two set over there, I instructed him. It didn't take any game to send guys into sets. Tell them you're showing some friends from America around and want suggestions for good clubs to take them to. It was a crash and burn mission. Sasha meekly approached them from behind and tried several times to get them to notice him. Once he had their attention, it was a struggle for him to keep it. Like many guys, he didn't communicate with energy. All those years of insecurity and social ostracism had chased his spirit and joy of life deep within his body. Whenever he opened his mouth, there was no need for anyone to strain to make out his faint mumblings. The message was clear, I was built to be ignored. Go in, Mystery said to me as he watched Sasha flounder with the Bow Derek blonde. What? Go in. Help him out. Show the boys how it's done. Fear seizes hold in your chest first. It clamps gently to the top of the heart, like a vice made of rubber. Then you really feel it. Your stomach churns. Your throat closes. And you swallow, desperately trying to avoid the dryness and hoping that when you open your mouth, a confident, clear voice will emerge. Even after all my training, I was terrified. Women, by and large, are much more perceptive than men. They can instantly spot insincerity and bullshit. So a great pickup artist must either be congruent with his material and really believe it or be a great actor. Anyone talking to a woman while simultaneously worrying about what she thinks of him is going to fail. Anyone caught thinking about getting into a woman's pants before she starts thinking about what's in his pants is going to fail. And most men fall into this category. Sasha does. I do. 
We can't help it, it's our nature. Mystery calls it dynamic social homeostasis. We are constantly buffeted about by, on one hand, our overwhelming desire to have sex with a girl and, on the other, the need to protect ourselves when approaching. The reason this fear exists, he says, is because we are wired evolutionarily for a tribal existence, where everyone in the community knows when a man is rejected by 80 for a woman. He is then ostracized and his genes, as Mystery puts it, are unapologetically weeded out of existence. As I approached, I tried to push the fear out of my chest and rationally assess the situation. Sasha's problem was his body position. Both women were facing the bar, and he had approached from behind. So they had to turn around to respond. But if they wanted to get rid of him, all they had to do was to turn back toward the bar, and he'd be shut out. I looked back. Mystery and the other two students were watching me as I approached. I had to work the angles right. So I came in from the left side of the bar, next to the black-haired girl the obstacle, as Mystery would say. 85 high, I rasped. I cleared my throat. I'm the friend Sasha was telling you about. So what clubs did you recommend? I could sense a silent sigh of relief from all parties that someone had come in to make things less awkward. Well, Rika is a fun place for dinner, the black-haired girl said. And along the waterfront there are some great boats, like Lucas, Cruz, and Exil. Underground and RA are fun too, though they're not the kinds of places I go to. Hey. As long as we're talking, I want to get your opinion on something. I was on familiar ground now. Do you think spells work? By now, I was getting used to telling the spells opener a story about a friend who fell in love with a woman after she surreptitiously cast an attraction spell on him. So while my mouth moved, my brain thought strategy. I needed to reposition myself next to the Boderic blonde. Yes. I was going to steal my student's girl. It's not like he had a chance with her anyway. When I finished, I said, I'm asking because I never believed in that stuff before, but I had an amazing experience recently. Here I addressed the blonde let me show you something. I maneuvered myself around to the other side of their stools, so that I was next to my target. 86 now that I was one on one with her, I still needed to sit down, otherwise she'd eventually get uncomfortable with me lurking over her. However, there weren't any open stools, so I'd have to improvise. Give me your hands, I told her, and stand up for a moment. As soon as she stood, I wheeled around behind her and slid into her seat. Now I was finally in the set, and she was lurking awkwardly on the outside. This was the science of approaching perfectly executed, like a good game of chess. I just stole your chair, I laughed. She smiled and punched me teasingly in the arm. The game had begun. I'm just kidding, I continued. Stay close. We'll try an ESP experiment. But I can only stay for a moment. Then you can have your chair back. Even though I guessed her number wrong, it was 10, she still enjoyed the process. As we talked afterward, Mystery walked up to Sasha and told 87 him to keep the black-haired woman occupied so she wouldn't pull my target away. Marco was right, the girls were gorgeous here. They were also extremely bright and, much to my relief, spoke better English than I did. I truly enjoyed listening to this girl, she was captivating, well-read, and had an MBA. When it came time to leave, I told her it would be great to see her again before I left. She pulled a pen from her purse and gave me her phone number. I could feel Mystery's approval and the student's acceptance. Style was the real deal. Sasha was still talking to the black-haired girl, so I whispered in his ear, tell her we have to go, and ask for her email. He did and, lo and behold, she gave it to him. We rejoined the group and left the cafe. Sasha was a new man. Flushed with excitement, he skipped down the street like a little boy, singing in Serbian. He was being, in his own awkward way, himself. 
he'd never gotten a girl's email address before. I'm so happy, Sasha raved. This is probably the best day of my life. As anyone who regularly reads newspapers or true crime books knows, a significant percentage of violent crime, from kidnappings to shooting sprees, is the result of the frustrated sexual impulses and desires of males. By socializing guys like Sasha, Mystery, and I were making the world a safer place. Mystery threw his arm around my neck and pulled my face into his wizard's overcoat. You've done me proud, he said. It's not just about getting the girl. It's about the students seeing it happen and believing it can be done. It was then that I realized the downside to this whole venture. A gulf was opening between men and women in my mind. I was beginning to see women solely as measuring instruments to give me feedback on how I was progressing as a pickup artist. They were my crash test dummies, identifiable only by hair colors and numbers a blonde 7, a brunette 10. Even when I was having a deep conversation, learning about a woman's dreams and point of view, in my mind I was just ticking off a box in my routine marked rapport. In bonding with men, I was developing an unhealthy attitude toward the opposite sex. And the most troubling thing about this new mindset was that it seemed to be making me more successful with women. Marco drove us to R.A., an Egyptian-themed nightclub guarded by two concrete statues of Anubis. Inside, it was nearly empty. There were just SE-88 security guards, bartenders, and a group of nine noisy Serbians clustered on bar stools around a small circular table. We were about to leave when Mystery spied, among the group of Serbians, a lone girl. She was young and slender with long black hair and a red dress that showed off a set of perfectly tapered legs. It was an impossible set, she was surrounded by stocky guys with crew cuts. These were men who had clearly been in the military during the war, men who had probably killed before, maybe even with their bare hands. And Mystery was going in. The pickup artist is the exception to the rule. Here, he told me. Clasp your hands together. And when I say so, act as if you can't open them. He pretended, through the art of illusion, to seal my hands together. I pretended to be amazed. The commotion attracted the attention of the bouncers in the club, who asked him to try the feet with their hammer fists. Instead, Mystery performed his watch-stopping illusion for them. Soon, the club manager was giving him free drinks and the table of Serbians had halted their conversation and were gawking at him, including his target. If you can make a girl envy you, Mystery told the students, you can make a girl sleep with you. Two principles were at work. First, he was generating social proof by earning the attention and approval of the club staff. And, second, he was pawning in other words, he was using one group to work his way into another, less approachable group nearby. For his coup de grace, Mystery told the club manager he would levitate a beer bottle. He approached the table of Serbians, asked to borrow an empty bottle, and made it float in the air in front of him for a few seconds. Now he was in his target's group. He performed a few illusions for the guys and ignored the girl for the requisite five minutes. Then he relented, started talking to her, and isolated her to a couch nearby. He had pawned the entire club just to meet her. Since the girl spoke only a little English, Mystery used Marco as a translator. It was a longer set than usual, because Mystery needed to convince her that he wasn't practicing any form of witchcraft or black magic. Everything you've seen tonight is fake, Mystery finally told her, via Marco. I created all this to meet you. It's a social illusion. 89 The two finally exchanged numbers I can't promise you anything other than good conversation, Mystery instructed Marco to tell her and we collected the students to leave the club. However, on our way out, an AMOG from the table blocked Mystery's path. He wore a tight black t-shirt, exposing a physique that made Mystery's dowie body look feminine in comparison. So you like Natalija, magic man, he asked. Natalija? We're going to be seeing each other. Is that okay with you? She's my girlfriend, the AMOG said. I want you to stay away from her. 
That's up to her, Mystery replied, taking a step closer to the AMOG. Mystery wasn't backing down. He was an idiot. I looked at the AMOG's hands and wondered how many Croatian necks he had snapped in his day. The AMOG lifted his waistband, exposing the black handle of a pistol. So, magic man, can you bend this? This was no invitation, it was a threat. Marco turned to me, panicked. He's going to get us killed, he said. Most of the guys at these clubs are ex-soldiers and mobsters. Killing someone over a girl is nothing for them. Mystery waved his hand over the AMOG's forehead. You saw me move that beer bottle without touching it, he said. It weighs 800 grams. Now imagine what I could do to one tiny brain cell in your head. He snapped his fingers to indicate the pop of a brain cell. The AMOG looked Mystery in the eyes to see if he was bluffing. Mystery held his eye contact. One second passed. Two seconds. Three. Four. Five. It was killing me. Eight. Nine. Ten. The AMOG lowered his shirt back over the gun. Mystery had the advantage here, no one in Belgrade had ever seen a magician perform live before. They'd only been exposed to magic on television. So when Mystery disproved in an instant the belief that magic was just camera tricks, an older belief replaced it, the superstition that just maybe magic is real. The AMOG stood there, silent, as Mystery walked out unscathed. Some girls are different. That's what Marco thought. After everything he'd seen during Mystery's workshop, he was in no way a convert. Goka wasn't like those other girls, he insisted. She came from a good family, she was well educated, and she had morals, unlike that materialistic club trash. I'd heard it all before from dozens of guys. And I'd heard just as many intelligent women say, that wouldn't work on me, when I told them about the community. Yet minutes or hours later, I'd see them exchanging phone numbers or saliva with one of the boys. The smarter a girl is, the better it works. Party girls with attention deficit disorder generally don't stick around to hear the routines. A more perceptive, worldly, or educated girl will listen and think, and soon find herself ensnared. And so it was that mystery and I found ourselves out on New Year's Eve with Marco and his one-itis, Goka. Marco put on a grey suit, picked her up at 8 p.m., ran around and opened the car door for her, and handed her a dozen roses. She seemed like a bright, successful, well-bred girl. She was short with long chestnut hair, gentle eyes, and a smile that arced just a little wider on one side. Marco was right, she did look like the marrying kind. The restaurant was traditional Serbian fare, heavy on the red peppers and red meat. And the music was pure anarchy, four brass bands wandered the rooms, blaring a cacophony of overlapping parade marches. I watched Marco and Goka carefully all night, curious to see if this whole dating thing worked. They sat next to each other awkwardly. Their interaction consisted only of the necessary formalities of the evening, the menu, the service, the atmosphere. Haha, <laughs> wasn't that funny when the waiter gave you my steak? The tension was killing me. It wasn't as if Marco was a natural. In grade school he'd never been that popular, largely on account of being foreign, having the nickname Pumpkinhead, and joining the Young Republican Club. By the time he had graduated, he was probably worse off than I was, at least I'd kissed a girl. 91 in college, he began taking steps toward relations with the opposite sex he purchased a leather jacket, invented an aristocratic background for himself, put Terence Trent Darby braids in his hair, and bought his first Mercedes-Benz. The effort earned him some attention, even a few female friends. But it wasn't until junior year that he was finally comfortable enough around women to start removing clothes with them, thanks largely to a younger student he befriended, Dustin. The taste of those first small victories was so sweet that Marco stayed in college for three more years, basking in his hard-won popularity. One of Marco's more peculiar habits is that he takes hour-long showers every night. 
no one has ever come up with a plausible explanation of what he does in there, because nothing makes sense masturbating, for example, doesn't take that long. If you have any theories, please send them to, monofstyle at gmail.com. After watching Marco sit uselessly next to Goka for an hour, I cracked. I grabbed my camera and ran Mystery's digital photo routine on the pier. I asked them to take a picture smiling, then one looking serious, and finally a passionate picture kissing, for example. Marco stuck his neck out toward her, chicken-like, and pecked. No, a real kiss, I insisted, concluding the routine as the two would-be betrothed's lips bumped in what was the clumsiest first kiss I had ever witnessed. After dinner, Mystery and I terrorized the two-room restaurant, dancing with the old men, performing magic tricks for the waiters, and flirting indiscriminately with the married women. When we returned to the table glowing, Goka's eyes met mine, for a moment they seemed to sparkle, as if searching for something in my gaze. I could swear it was an IOI. That night, I was awoken by a warm body climbing under the covers. It was my turn to share the bed with Marco, but this wasn't Marco. It was a woman's body. I felt a pair of warm hands caress my newly shaven skull. Goka. SHH, she said, and sucked my upper lip into her mouth. I pulled loose. But what about Marco? He's in the shower, she said. Did you and he? No, she said with a contempt that surprised me. Goka and I had hit it off that night, so had Goka and Mystery. She had 92 made a pass at Mystery earlier, and he'd pretended not to notice. But it was harder not to notice her when she was in my bed, in my nostrils, in my mouth. Sure, she'd had a few drinks, but alcohol has never caused anyone to do something they didn't want to. It only enables them to do what they've always wanted but repressed. And right now it looked like Goka wanted to be with a man who possessed all six of the five characteristics of an alpha male. Logically, it's easy to say that it's wrong to sleep with a girl your friend is pursuing. But when her body is pressed against yours so submissively, and you can smell the conditioner in her hair, strawberry, and that storm cloud of passion created by her desire has begun gathering around the two of you, try saying no. It's just two, right there. I ran my hands beneath her hair and slowly dragged my fingernails upward along her scalp. A shiver of pleasure ran through her body. Our lips met, our tongues met, our chests met. I couldn't do this. I can't do this. Why? Because of Marco. Marco, she asked, as if she'd never heard the name before. He's sweet, but he's just a friend. Listen, I said. You should go. Marco will probably be out of the shower soon. Fifty minutes later, Marco was out of the shower. I heard him and Goka arguing in Serbian in the hallway. A door slammed. Marco walked wearily into the room and collapsed onto his half of the bed. Well. I asked. He was never one to show much emotion. Well, I want to take Mystery's next workshop. 